Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Recently, KMWE, a Dutch supplier of lithography machine components, established a new factory in China. Company executives admitted that they would not have made this decision if it weren't for the intensified technological friction between China and the United States. Surprisingly, despite export restrictions, Dutch lithography machine giant ASML has seen its sales in the Chinese market increase, not decrease. In the third quarter of last year, sales in China accounted for 46%, nearly half of its global revenue. Last year, the United States, along with the Netherlands, Japan, and other countries, imposed an embargo on high-end lithography machines on China. The Dutch government, citing national security, has restricted exports of some mid- and low-end equipment. ASML executives have publicly stated that the equipment sold in China does not involve cutting-edge technology and poses no security risks. Photoresist products developed by several domestic companies have made progress in resolution and sensitivity and are beginning to enter the supply chains of domestic chipmakers. While these products' performance still lags behind international top-tier standards, they are already capable of meeting the needs of mature processes. A domestic silicon wafer manufacturer revealed that its monthly production of 12-inch wafers has increased to 150,000 wafers, meeting 40% of domestic demand, and orders continue to grow. Chip manufacturers are accelerating the process of domestic substitution. Among newly commissioned production lines at a well-known wafer fab, domestically produced equipment accounts for 35%, a 12 percentage point increase from last year. Government procurement and purchase lists of large state-owned enterprises show that supply chain stability has surpassed price as the primary consideration. This shift has led many international suppliers to adjust their strategies and begin shifting production capacity to China. American semiconductor companies are also facing difficulties. NVIDIA's CEO stated that a complete loss of the Chinese market would result in a revenue drop of over 20%. The company is developing new computing cards that comply with export control regulations to maintain its presence in the Chinese market. Dutch government officials recently stated that they would maintain independent decision-making power in export policy a statement interpreted as a reluctance to fully follow U.S. restrictions. In fact, several European countries, including Germany and France, are seeking to maintain semiconductor trade relations with China. The traditional cross-border linear supply chain is being replaced by a regional, internal circulation system. KMWE established a factory in China to achieve local supply and reduce the risks associated with international policy changes. In addition to KMWE, three other European semiconductor equipment suppliers are in talks to establish assembly or production bases in China, primarily in the Yangtze River Delta and Pearl River Delta regions. Japanese and South Korean semiconductor companies adhere to export control regulations while maintaining collaboration with Chinese companies through technology licensing and other means. A South Korean equipment manufacturer recently established a joint venture with a Chinese company to specialize in the production of mature process equipment. Supply chain restructuring is changing the industry ecosystem. Companies that previously relied on a single global supply chain are now building a diversified supply chain. A domestic chip design company stated that its products now need to be compatible with different process lines from TSMC, SMIC, and Huahong Semiconductor. 
Equipment integration has become a major challenge. A wafer fab engineer stated that equipment from different sources requires longer debugging time to work together, and software toolchain adaptation issues also require a significant number of technical personnel to resolve. Yield data shows that the average yield of 28 nanometers production lines using domestically produced equipment reached 75%, 12 percentage points lower than that of imported equipment. This figure has increased by 8 percentage points over the past 12 months, exceeding expectations. A domestic mobile phone manufacturer has begun using power management chips based on a domestic 28 nanometers process in its mid-range models, marking the first time domestic chips have entered the mainstream consumer electronics supply chain. Policy support continues to increase. The National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund has raised 150 billion yuan in its second phase, focusing on weak links such as equipment and materials. Local government matching funds are expected to drive over 500 billion yuan in social investment. R&D investment is becoming more concentrated, with the number of collaborative projects between universities, research institutions, and enterprises increasing by 40% year-on-year, with over 60% of these projects focused on core equipment such as lithography machines and etching machines. The enrollment of demonstration microelectronics colleges has expanded by 25%, with majors shifting from design to fundamental areas, such as equipment and materials. Starting salaries offered by companies to new graduates have increased by 15% year-on-year, exceeding the industry average. The number of foreign suppliers setting up factories in China continues to increase, and nearshoring is becoming a trend for European semiconductor companies. This adjustment is intended both to mitigate policy risks and to gain closer access to the Chinese market. The escalation of restrictions in the Netherlands underscores profound changes in the global chip industry chain. The scale and resilience of the Chinese market have become key factors attracting international companies while the accelerated pace of localization is reshaping the supply chain landscape. From equipment to materials, from manufacturing to design, every link is undergoing a silent restructuring. This restructuring is not only affecting China, but also reshaping the global semiconductor industry ecosystem.